All right, and continuing on with the 2009 AIME number one, problem number four. Here we go. In parallelogram ABCD, point M is on AB so that AM over AB equals 17 over 1,000. It's right about here where if we don't start drawing a picture, the words are going to become meaningless. So let's start with a picture of some kind. Let's just make a random parallelogram. We'll come over here. It doesn't really matter the dimensions. Just make sure it doesn't look like a rhombus. Um, okay, so then I'm going to call this A here, B here, C here, and D here. Again, it may turn out that the dimensions are improper, but we're just thinking about it conceptually. We don't really care if the image actually represents perfectly what we want. Um, so uh, we said that AM over AB is 1,000. If I wanted to do that, M would be like right up here, really close to A, but you can't really work with that. So just extend it out. Again, it's conceptual. It doesn't really matter if what we uh, get really represents what's going on. Um, and point N is on AD, so we'll put N right here, uh, so that AN over AD is 17 over 2009. Okay, before we continue, let's do some things. Um, AM is 17 over, AM over AB is 17 over 1,000. There's really no reason we can't just let AB equal the length of 1,000, in which case AM would be exactly 17. Okay, we can do the same thing over here. We can say that AN is 17 and AD is 2,009. Again, you'll notice that 2,009 looks shorter than 1,000. We don't really care. Uh, you don't want to redraw the picture just for stuff like that. Um, so then we say what? Let P be the point of intersection of AC, which we don't have drawn, so we should draw A to C and MN. More like that. Okay, so MN's not drawn either, so we'll add it in, and P will be this point right here. Okay. Find AC over AP. Okay, well, uh, we're looking for this. How can we get to that? Uh, again, you have 12 minutes of problem on average, and that's only if you plan on answering all 15, which for most people taking the Amy for the first time, you're not going to get to all 15. So you have a little more than 12 minutes per question. You don't have to race through things like this. Don't feel the pressure of time. Just give it some thought, think about it, and after a little while you should start to think that maybe we should try to create some sort of similar triangles. Um, for example, if I come from the point N and I come down this way with a line parallel to AM and DC, I can call this point E if I want. And what I've just done is I've created several options for similar triangles. Number one, we're going to have that triangle AEN is similar to ACD. Okay, uh, in the future, if we want, which for my solution I'm about to show, we don't need to, but there are solutions that use this, we can also do AMP uh, is similar to ENP because these two parallel lines leave alternate interior angles congruent, and so you get similar triangles there also. Uh, there are solutions that use that. If you want to look them up, you can. Um, the official solution actually uses that as well. So uh, AE, just make out what you know now. We know that AE over AC is equal to EN over CD is equal to AN over AD. That's first two with first two, second two with second two, first and third with first and third. Um, so now what do we do? Um, well, we got AE over AC, but we really don't want that. We just want AP uh, over AC, or actually the reciprocal of that. What about EN over CD? We can't do much with that yet, but AN over AD, we know what that is. That's 17 over 2009. So now we get that all three of these are equal to 17 over 2009. And in fact, because it's a parallelogram, we know that A, B, and C, D are equal. They're both 1,000, which means that I can express N, E, or E, N as equal to 
17 over 2009 times CD, which is 1,000 in our problem. Uh, again, when you're dealing with ratios, uh, as long as everything's got the correct proportion, um, it doesn't matter what you know, lengths you chose. We could have chose 34 and 2,000. It doesn't matter. It'll all work out. So EN would then be equal to 17,000 over 2009. Okay, that's great, but it also gives me an idea. If I write this 17,000 over 2009 here, uh, it gives me an idea of another concept I've seen, and I can't remember where it was I saw it. It could have been an AOPS book, or it might have been in Sam Chen's AMC 8 prep. The concept is like this. Let's say I've got a parallel line here and another parallel line here to that one. And from the top of this parallel line, I draw to the bottom of the other parallel segment and to here. And let's call this length A and this length B. Well, if I go from the meeting place of these two crossing over lines, they'd be diagonals of a quadrilateral, for instance. Um, if I go from there and I also make parallel to A and B, and I call this length C, there's something very interesting about this, and I'm not going to prove it to you here. You can look up a proof for it elsewhere if you want. But the fact is that 1 over A plus 1 over B is equal to 1 over C. And so because of that, it's because of similar triangles if you want to investigate. It has to do with this triangle being similar to this triangle and this triangle being similar to this triangle. Play around with it, see if you can prove it. Okay, so 1 over A plus 1 over A, how does this help us? Well, we can go from P straight up here parallel to A, M, and N, E, and this we can just call C, just like this one's called C. And in fact, uh, let's think about what we want now. We want AC over AP, which is this big length over this smaller length, and by making this line PF, we can call it, PF parallel to CD, we now have triangle APF is similar to ACD. And AC, which is the first two letters here, over AP, we can make a ratio with that. AC over AP is also going to equal, um, oh yeah, APF. Um, it's also going to equal CD over PF, right? And so if we can find PF, we actually get the answer because we know that CD is 1,000, right? And PF is the value of C. So now this is the answer because AC over AP is what we're looking for. I can call this 1,000 times 1 over C if I want. And 1 over C is right here. So we're basically done. All that's left is mopping up and not making a mistake. Again, don't race through the, the, the mopping up part either. You can't make casual errors on this test. You got so much time. Don't worry about the time. Okay, so B up to the 1 gives B. A up to the 1 gives A. Multiply A times B, AB. This is equal to 1 over C, but what is our A and B? Our A and B is 17 and 17,000 over 2009. So let's just write this as 17 plus 17,000 over 2009 over A times B, which is going to be 289,000 over 2009. And I'm going to clean this up the way I want to, which is to multiply by the denominator on the top and the bottom, 2009 over 2009. That in turn is going to give 17 times 2009. Don't multiply, almost never multiply stuff, unless it's an easy one like 17 times 1,000 we did earlier. Because uh, usually there's a way to simplify that re doesn't require you to multiply that all out. And we're going to bank on hoping for that situation to occur, and it will. So 17 times 2009, here it cancels to give 17,000 over the 2009's cancel here to give 289,000. And we're good because this 17 can factor out with this 17 
to give 17 times 2009 plus 1,000. And this 17 will now cancel with the 289,000 to give 17,000. So now we can express this as 1,000 times 1 over C. And again, 1 over C is this expression. Uh, the 17 is canceled. 2009 plus 1,000 is 3,009 over 17,000, which I'm going to write as 1,000 times 17. And why have I done that? So that the 1,000s cancel. Then I'm going to just do the division. And we're going to do it old school because I don't remember what it is or know what it is. All right, so 17 goes into 3,030 uh, one time. You get 17, leaving 13. Drop the zero. 17 is going to go into there. Uh, 7 times 17 is 119. So 70 plus 49 is 119, leaving 11 and dropping the 9. And perfect, it goes in 177 times. And that is the answer because it is AC over AP. All right, continuing on with the 2009 Amy problem number 5. Triangle ABC has AC equal to 450 and BC equal to 300. Pause and think. We don't have a picture, so we're probably going to have to create one, obviously. So let's get started on that. We don't really know much about angle C or anything. I don't see anything about angles coming up necessarily that much. So just, just take a stab at it. We'll put AC here, making it flat. And uh, that'll be 450, and then BC, which is 300, is two-thirds of that. So at some random angle, uh, just put B out there like that, about two-thirds of the original, and we continue on. Um, it says we have triangle AB, so let's go ahead and connect the A. Um, it shouldn't be a right angle. Don't think of it that way. We don't have any idea. Um, points K and L are located on AC and AB so that AK equals CK. So we know where K is. If AK equals CK and it's on AB, or AC rather, then K is the midpoint. So pick what it looks like about the midpoint, maybe here, call it K. Okay, and we also need L to be on AB, this side. So that CL is the angle bisector of angle C. So just try to cut it in half approximately. And L will go here. Okay. Um, let P be the point of intersection of BK, which we don't have drawn, so let's draw that. B to K. Um, and CL. So we then know that P is this point right here. And let M be the point on line BK for which K is the midpoint of PM. So let's think. If PK is this distance, go about the same distance out, maybe here or here or so. And um, that's going to be M. We'll erase the K and draw it off to the side. So the K is here now. Um, and it says that AM equals 180. But there's no AM, so draw it. A to M will look like this. And that is 180. We also know this equals this. OK. Uh, wants us to find LP. Let's go back and add some more information that we thought about but didn't write down. This is 450. And since K is the midpoint, this will be 225 and 225. BC is 300. Now, let's start thinking about this, I don't know, relatively quickly. We've got what looks like congruent triangles here. Let's think if we can prove it. Um, since KM and KP are equal and AK and KC are equal, we've got two sides and the included angle is vertical. So by side angle side, they are congruent. Um, that means that this angle here is equal to this angle here, along with this angle here, because that was an angle bisector. Um, 
Not sure what else you are going to do with that at this time, but just an observation that they are congruent. Um, let's go back and think about angle bisector. Whenever you see angle bisector, what's the first thought you have? It should be angle bisector theorem. This is what I call green light go. There's a green light and you go. You don't think about it. Same thing with angle bisector. When you see an angle bisector in a problem, your first thought should probably be if there's a triangle involved, um, uh, angle bisector theorem. To refresh your memory on that, let's make a random triangle here and make an angle bisector here. If this is A, B, C, and D, for any triangle, the ratio of A over B will equal D over C. And there is various different uh, versions of it. You could also say A over D equals B over C. That would be the same as swapping the corners of the proportion that we've made. Um, you could also say B over C equals A over D. So all kinds of stuff, right? Okay, so if we've got an angle bisector here, um, what are the opposite sides? We've got LB and uh, LA would be like this B and C basically. And so we could say that 450 over LA, or better yet, let's do this. Let's use the version uh, where we compare the two sides A over D equals B over C. So 450 over 300, that's a 3 to 2 ratio. Then LA over LB has to also be in that same 3 to 2 ratio. And so this becomes 3x, let's say, and 2x. We don't know the value of x. It's the scale factor. Okay, but we know they're in the 3 to 2 ratio. All right, so now what can we say? Um, the fact that these two triangles are congruent means that we said these two angles are equal. Well, maybe we can find some way to get, we're looking for LP again, that's this length right here. This looks parallel to this. Maybe it is, and it is because of angle bisector theorem, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, alternate interior angle converse. So the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem, again, says that if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines that make them are parallel. So that means AM is parallel to LC, and because of that, we know that triangle BLP, here, 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 is similar to BAM. And as such, that means that LP over AM is equal to LB, which is these two, the first two, over AB. Be careful not to make it 2 to 3. That's not correct. It's 2 to 5, right? So this is equal to 2 over 5. And the thing is, we know what AM is. They told us. It's 180. This problem's basically done. LP equals 2 fifths times 180. 5 goes into 180 36 times and 2 times 36 is 72. Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is the 2009 Amy 1 problem number 6. How many positive integers n less than 1000 are there such that the equation x to the power of the greatest integer less than or equal to x is equal to n has a solution for x. And then it tells you the notation that looks like this uh, denotes the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. Uh, this is also called the floor function. You also might see it in school as int of x or a bracket of x like this. Um, floor function, why is it called that? Well, there's another one called the ceiling function. And it does what you think. If the floor function rounds down, the ceiling function rounds up. And that's basically what you're doing. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get started on the solution. Okay, so for this one, uh, to be honest, I wanted to film this video and I wanted to have three problems on it. And because of that, I wasn't really able to think of how to do this exactly right. Um, so I did inspect the solutions at AOPS, and they gave a little assist to the approach I'm going to take now. Okay, so um, 
basically, if this is the greatest integer less than or equal to x, then it's an integer, right? So we can think of it as, uh, oh, we have to have n less than 1,000. So let's say it was uh, near 1,000, or let's try and get as close to 1,000 as we can. Let's say x was an integer itself. Let's say it was 4. 4 to the 4th is equal to 16 squared is 256. We're good. That's less than 1,000. Uh, let's say it was 5, though. 5 to the 5th um, is equal to uh, 3,125. And so because of that, that's bigger than 1,000. We're not going to be able to have x be equal to 5 or greater. So x itself is going to have to be less than 5. And from this point, we're just going to do some casework based on the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Let's start with the greatest integer less than or equal to x is equal to 0. If this is the case, n will equal 1, and x will have to be not equal to 0, but it will have to be greater than 0 because 0 to the 0 is undefined. Um, it will also have to be less than 1. And so as long as x is anything in here, you will get to the 0 power, which will come out to be 1. And so we get one way there. Let's go to the next case. We'll call this case 0, since the 0 matches the value. And then we have case 1, which is the greatest integer is equal to 1. Again, this means x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2. Um, since it can't equal 2, um, we know we're going to get x to the first equals n and because of that x can't equal 2 I can only get n to come out to be 1 and so really the only value that works is 1 to the first power and we already have that value covered in case 0 so we're not going to get any new uh, values of n from this case then we're going to go to case 2, which is going to be when the greatest integer is equal to 2. Um, now keep in mind, this will mean that x squared is equal to n. And we know that if the greatest integer less than or equal to x is 2, that x is going to have to be greater than or equal to 2, but less than 3. And we can simply plug these into x squared to get that n is greater than or equal to 4 but less than 9. And so now we can check the values. They're 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, but you can just do 9 minus 4 and you will get that there are five such values of n. Moving on to case 3. Uh, this is when the greatest integer less than or equal to x is equal to 3. And so you're going to have x to the third is equal to n. Um, we also know that x is restricted to being greater than or equal to 3, so it can fall down to 3, but less than 4. Okay, so then just plug the 3 into here, and you will get that n is greater than or equal to 27. And it has to be less than 4 cubed, which is 64. And again, we can just do 64 minus 27 to get 37 ways for this to occur. The last case we need to look at is when the greatest integer less than or equal to x is equal to 4. And we just follow the same format. x to the fourth is going to be equal to n in this case. Again, x doesn't have to be an integer, so it's anything in between. What? Anything greater than or equal to 4, but less than 5. Right? If it got to be 5, we have that issue we talked about at the beginning. So then n, if I plug in these values of 4 into here, 4 to the 4th is 256. So n has to be greater than or equal to that for this case, and less than um, uh, 5 to the 4th, which is 25 squared, which is 625. Before I calculate this last value, you might be wondering, but is there really an x value that does that? Yeah, let's let n equal 300. Right? If n was 300, right, then you would have x to the 4th equals 300. x just becomes the 4th root of 300, which we already know is between uh, 4 and 5. And so we don't have to worry about it. There's definitely a value for x. We don't need to find the value. We don't have to know what its approximate decimal is. We don't care. 
We're looking for values of n. So this is definitely okay. The last one we get by 625 minus 256. Um, I will do 625 minus 225 to get 400. And then uh, actually I didn't want to subtract that much. I wanted to subtract only 256. So we will take uh, 21 away from that, right? No, uh, from 25 to 56 is 31. So if I subtract 31 from 400, I get 369. And then we're just going to add all of that up. So we've got 369 plus 37 and 5 is 42 and 1 is 43. So 369 plus 43 is going to give 12, 1, 11, 1, 400 and 12. And that is the correct answer. Okay, hope it helps.